Hello everybody, my name is Timothy Trespass and I am a targeted individual. Uh, I just noticed that everything I own, let's see if we can see this here, is... Can you see it in the light? You can't see it with this crappy uh, lens. There you go, see the threadbare? Ah, here's the sweatshirt now. Threadbare. Same thing with the other hand. Threadbare. You look down here. I don't know. Can you see this one? Threadbare. Threadbare. And like all of my clothes. Everything. My shirts. My jackets. My pants. My, you know, clothes. All of my clothes have been destroyed by by Morgellons attack, by whatever these little nano jiggy baggies are that eat everything that you <laughs> wear. And uh, uh, weird people looking at me with weird looks as they're driving by. It's a weird day, man. Um, anyway, then we end up washing everything with borax, which, as many Morgellons people know, is one of the few things that seems to wash these fucking things away, at least for a moment. Uh, but borax is not nice to your clothing. It's really rough. And there was quite a while where we were using bleach, uh, potassium or hypochlorite or sodium hypochlorite, whatever it is. Bleach. And uh, I'll tell you something, neither of us, neither Petra nor myself, are very good at, at not destroying the clothes with bleach. So everything I have is not only threadbare around the edges, but has bleach stains all over it. So it's like, you know, I used to have some nice clothes and shit. I used to, I used to actually live in, in, a, in a doorman building on 43rd Street, overlooking 42nd Street in Manhattan on the west side. Uh, it was one of these amazing Mitchell Lama, you know, uh, low rent, low income places. I was paying with my girlfriend six fifty a month for a one bedroom with a marble bathroom and a microwave and a dishwasher and all the crap that most poor people never even see in their apartment. Um, it was beautiful. We had our own health club. And we didn't have a swimming pool, but, you know. And, uh, now I forget the fucking point of this whole thing. See, that's what more gallons does to your brain. <sighs> anyway. Oh, yes. Ah, I lived in this really nice place. So, I wore really nice clothes. Um, uh, my girlfriend's parents kept buying me, like, dress shirts and dress pants and and stuff so uh, and my father kept telling me oh everybody judges you by your appearance they don't care who you really are yeah well <laughs> what a great lesson to learn uh, so I did my little dress up in my little you know fancy pantsy thing <laughs> Petra when she first met me she said you know who gave you those <laughs> those clothes <laughs> you look so uncomfortable in them I'm like yeah well <laughs> You're right, actually, because I would only put them on to go out. When I came home, I had a special set of clothes I could wear that could get fucked up by all the stuff I was doing. Pardon my uh, language. Um, I was doing a little home gardening at the time, uh, along with all my electronics and, you know, crazy electromechanical whateverness. Uh, anyway, ramble, bamble, babble, babble. Um, when we had the Morgellons infection, which in our case was purposefully uh, put on us and in us over and over, over the course of a year at least, where they were blowing this mo a fog, a mist, into our room through the floorboards or the cracks and the crevices, they had moved all the walls and, I mean, this was insane, man, they had a, a whole team of... A whole special team 
a guy with little canisters of gas. They look like propane cans, but a little different. Chased him downstairs once. Whether that was all an act or the real deal, I don't know. I mean, they were spraying crap in. You could see it. It would sting your skin. It would bite you. And millions of billions of bugs would flourish and jump all over and go into you and infest everything you owned. And they would never leave. Uh, some of them you could see, some of them you couldn't. Uh, there were things that loved skin. They loved skin. So they liked leather. They liked, uh, you know, they were in the clothes. They were eating the clothes. The weirdest freaking thing that happened was there were times where the clothes that we had, A, it seemed like people had replaced our clothes with other clothes that were similar but were different. Uh, B, there were times when the clothes appeared to be measuring us. I'll say it again, the clothes appeared to be measuring us. Uh, I know that sounds like it's insane, but literally the clothes would get tighter on you and looser and uh, we couldn't really figure it out, uh, you know. We assumed that they must be measuring us, but uh, it's probably something else actually. And then the weirdest thing, once I was standing, sitting on the bed, it's so like sitting up on my knees on the loft bed, and my underwear starts to feel funny. I'm wearing boxer shorts. And, and it's getting all weird and itchy and, and uncomfortable and it feels like it's falling down. And so I take my pants off and I look at my boxer shorts and literally they're, they're going, let's see if I can do this with one hand, and getting bigger and bigger. Like the elastic was de-elastizing right before my very eyes. And, and the, the, how can I do this? Uh, all right, let's see. Uh, from here, let's see, from here to about here was how big my underwear was. You know, like three times the normal size it grew to and fell off of me. And I'm showing Patreon, we were laughing our asses off because stuff like that doesn't happen every day. Um, yeah, there was some pretty weird stuff going on, but uh, these creatures, they ate everything and the clothes that they didn't destroy got destroyed in the move or got destroyed by all the spraying, you know, because we thought we were trying to kill bugs. <laughs> Even after there were no more bugs, they're still jumping around, so I don't know. We went through thousands of dollars of pesticides and propane sprayers and you know, essential herb oils and, uh, wow. And I know you people have been through it all too. Enzymatic cleaners and borax and this, that, and the other thing, you know. And that's for the stuff outside of you. And then all the stuff you're going to put inside of you. And nobody really knows if this stuff helps, man. I'll tell you, in our case, this stuff was genetically designed for us. The clue being DNA1 and DNA2, the SSIDs of the routers available to us when we went to this quote-unquote lawyer's office for a meeting and were ushered into this, uh, this room upstairs where all these people in suits had been following us and were staying there too. And suddenly cameras appeared on the ceiling and different food in the refrigerator and they were there watching us from the other room. We said, fuck that, we're staying here tonight. We're not going back to that nightmare. And that's when the, the weird encounters with other dimensional beings seem to occur in that place. But, um, you know, I don't know. I really wish I could piece this all together. I, I wish I could piece it all together in my mind as one coherent understanding with all the facts that are required uh, all of the the need to know known and and uh, you know I, I would really love to put this together man because we're left with like all of these concepts and thoughts and and ideas and and is it this is it that and you know many people they tell me oh it's this guy who I dissed or it's that person I offended or it's this guy who wanted to screw me but I wouldn't sleep with him or you know it's it's this person who took my wealth because I was, you know, they all have reasons. Everybody's got reasons. Excuse me. But one thing I've discovered 
is that if you look, I, I mean, what am I trying to say? That that this thing that they do to you, this programming and voice to skull and and interpersonal focus, uh, that you look to your own life, you look through the perspective of your own understanding, you look through your experience because the only way human beings understand things is to relate it to an experience we've already had. Excuse me. So, in trying to figure this out, of course we're going to take cues from our own lives. But you know what? It may not have anything to do with any of that. It may be something else entirely that we have no idea about yet. I mean, what do we know about our genetics? Do you know your family line throughout history since inception? Do you know the DNA of every other human being on this planet? Do you know how they contrast and compare? And what about the animals and the plants? Do we have DNA from animals and plants and other humans in us? Is it all one kind of DNA? Is it separate? Is it different? What's the deal? Nobody's telling us. They're making us believe DNA is just some seed that's inside of us that, like, tells us who we are and what we're going to look like and what we're going to be. But uh, real science is finding out that it's far more interesting than that. That the information seems to be, quote-unquote, non-local. In other words, extraterrestrial, not coming from this planet. Uh, and that we make this biostasis field several layers deep of this quantum uh, scalar energy that our macro computing DNA creates and that it all communicates with each other just like every photon in the world is supposed to know what every other photon is doing yes our DNA communicates with itself and supposedly, if you change one genetic thing, the entire organism can change. Uh, nobody's really talking about biogenesis either. Stuff that just sort of appears alive and wholly grown. But that's another story. Anyway, that's enough for now. Thanks for watching. God bless you all. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it.